Hello everyone, it's Nam! And we are here, and it's the first day and I'm already tired, how about you? Yeah, I, I'm tired, <laughs> I wonder why I'm tired Adam. Yeah, Liam did just march from the Nam Centre back to our hotel to get some gear. I had like a 10 kilo bag on my back in the midday sun, which neither me or Adam really thought about. It's like, I'll walk back, it'll be fine, I'll just quick walk. Yeah, yeah that, that was hard. Further away than we thought and warmer than we thought. But yeah, hope everyone's doing well at home. Um, we wanted to do this on Thursday, but the show floor didn't actually open properly till today. As you can hear from the music blasting behind us. Ah! We have a backing track, that's all it is. Yeah, backing track. It feels like I'm in a, a Nintendo game. But yeah, we've got the audience booth literally on the other side of this. Um, you can see uh, through here. Yep, Glenn Frick has with, uh, been hanging with us. He's been awesome. Yeah, he's been very cool. He's been uh, very uh, hospitable, is the right word? He's been very hospital. Yes, very hospital. <laughs> and um, no, it's been great. We've met some really cool people. Like, so far, the best part of Nam has been outside of Nam. Yeah, so far. You'll agree. Yeah. yeah, the food trucks are insane. E except the two notes booth. Yeah, two notes are absolutely killing it. So that's probably the first news topic of this. this Which is podcast. some breaking news as well. Like, yes. so this week we are breaking the news. We're not reporting it from elsewhere. We are full on breaking the news. Yeah. So the breaking news is, yeah. So we swap names because <laughs> our, our names are still alive from. No, 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 no. Yes. Two notes have got their Revolt guitar and bass preamps, which I think we did cover last week on the show. I feel, I feel, yeah, um, I feel like we did, yeah. Yeah, yeah I played yeah, them. We were talking about them and they're the, incredible. The, 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 the bass and all that. Yeah. But we've been playing them through. Genome. Wall of Sound is dead. Long live Wall of Sound. Now Genome will take its place. And it's. It's a little bit different. Very. And it's very, very cool. We've like, I think what's you obviously you'll have a video coming out soon. You've done a demo with it. Oh, yeah. The game went for it with you. But um, yeah, do you want to do you want to tell them what it does? Because it, it does a lot more now. It does a lot. So it, start with what you thought from Wall of Sound with the cab simulation. Add full preamps, guitar preamps, compressors, multi-band processing, delays, reverbs, choruses, modulation, the works. Everything is in there. So you can like turn off the amp sim Hi, and Ash. use. Uh, yeah, hi Ash. Um, you can turn off the amp sims and use a proper preamp if you want, or even a full amp with a load box, like an old captor, not an old captor, the, the non X captor, and then use that. Or you can turn on the inbuilt preamps and power amps and go from there. And you can create like multiple channels yeah. and you can merge stuff, yeah, you, link you, it back in. It's really bananas. I think it, Guillaume so. said that their the goal is to try and make it be like the, the DAW for your guitar setup. Yeah. Yeah, they're really going all in with this. I mean, it's an alpha build that we saw. It's really early in production, so it's not going to be ready for a while, but they wanted to show it off. And then even the alpha version, we played it and went, whoa, wow. Because there's, yeah, there's it's some a big, stuff it's a, it can do. It's a big step forward, and it opens up um, massive opportunities for the future, we'll yes. say. Yes. Yeah, it's a framework where Wall of Sound did a thing. Genome can hold everything so yeah the potential is absolutely bananas definitely something to, to invest in because there's some other things that we can't talk about yet but we can say that, that the future is there for that they're going to be building things around it and it's going to yeah. be really interesting absolutely and so yeah they've really excited us so far um the uh, audience and um, we know about the evo 16 and we know about the uh the id 44 mark ii because those are the things that are most like the latest videos have been on. But what we found today is that we've got a brand new console refresh that Andy from Audience has been working on in his spare time and completely redesigned the classic Audience desk. So yeah, hello to the Audience guys. Let's just quickly say hello to everybody who's in chat. We've got Marty Ahmad. Hi Marty. We've got Chumpy McChump. That's the name. Um, Ash on Xavier and Mage Prometheus, you're awake! Hey! Yeah, because we're a bit later, aren't we? It's like half nine, I think, over there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. As Yeah, it's, it's 9 30, because, yeah, regularly scheduled broadcast out of the window because we're in a different country. It's it's only uh, 1 p.m. here, and it's, uh, it's a very different time slot for us. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I uh, apologize if any of it's a little sketchy i was just saying that she was having a bit a bit of troubles with it being a bit laggy but 
Um, right. It should settle down a bit. We're on the media Wi-Fi and, and, and whatnot, so... Yes. Yeah, so we, we are at the mercy of Wi-Fi in the middle of an event like this. I have done a local recording, so if it's a complete disaster, then uh, we can always upload it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are getting quite a lot of dropped frames. Let's see about changing that bitrate, see if that fixes things. Uh, but yes. Um, but I mean, the other things that are interesting is a lot of people are saying that like Nam's dead. Um, yeah. It's not going to be able to come back. And it, it is a lot smaller. Yeah, like it's that. absolutely not dead. Um, it's it's ready to bounce back when its regular time slot comes. Let's put it that way. But yeah, there is a bit more space to move around, which is actually no bad thing in here. A lot of the kind of really weird niche companies haven't appeared this year, which and obviously yeah. anyone in China won't be able to make it, which yeah. is going to make a big difference. Yeah, there's that's a lot of electronic percentage. Yeah. But again, time will tell. Nature will heal. And yeah. Cheers to everybody who's watching. But Andre's tuned in. TK's tuned in. Yeah. Holding off a curry so you didn't miss it. Thank you very much. But make sure you... Oh, we had a chicken teriyaki poke bowl for lunch. Oh, that was really good. good. We've got some really good food here, we've got to say. As always, we always have to do a bit of a food tour when we're in now. Yeah. Of, of all places, we ended up getting food at Disneyland last night. Yeah. Thanks to Glenn Fricker and his lovely friend Chris, who used to be at Kalium Strings on... I can't remember what he said he's doing now, but if you know the guy with the incredible moustache, Mario, from, from Kalium, that, yeah, what a lovely man. Mm. And yeah, we ended up at Disneyland because this town is bizarre. And the night before that, we were on Hollywood Boulevard, and I got a picture with the Rush star, because, mm -hmm. hey, and then we went to a, an Irish bar, and that was, because that was, it was 24 hours of travel to get here. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you how insane travel is now, but we made it. And that's the main thing. And we met two of the Liam. We had some photo of the three Liams who became famous in the bar for the night. Yes, indeed. An Irish, like, uh, three Liams walk into an Irish bar is a thing that happened on Hollywood Boulevard. That sounds like a joke, and it was. Yeah. But the other weird thing is that the guy behind the bar was British, and he knew the guy who taught me how to produce. Yeah, that was really strange. Yeah. You fly halfway around the world, and you're, like, doing the Spider-Man pointing thing. Like, hang on. <laughs> uh, TK, you may have just missed the beginning. The hot item is definitely two notes, Gino. Gino. Very interesting. Yeah, what the the replacement for Wall of Sound, which is absolutely comprehensive and is so far the highlight of the show. Mm. And what's really cool as well is the two notes is looking at all the pieces of hardware that you've had a say in now. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing because, I mean, I, I'm not an official two notes employee, but I talk to them a lot and they do ask me, like, what do you want to see? What's. What we, what could we do better? What what do you want to see in the next thing? And some of the, I think the suggestions that I've made already made it into Gino. Uh, they've been working on it. Guillaume was saying for three years, so it's not exactly a new product, mm -hmm. but we've known them far longer than that, and so it's good to really see it all coming together. Is the the the, the, the other things that you did is that public knowledge? I'm sure, it is right. Victory is yeah. Laney. Yeah, there's now a new Laney amp, the Laney Studio, I think it was called, mm -hmm. which has two notes technology with all the Laney cabs in built, which I did. Hi, it's cool. So like, you've got all the Victory stuff, which Adam did. You've got all the Laney stuff that Adam did. It's like, dude, like you made the core components for a lot of these products. Like yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, it's it's all coming together now at the two notes booth with what we've been doing for years, and yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the TV in my bedroom. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, awesome. it looks like turn the bit rate down and stop the drop. Yeah, Ash, you just so said yeah. it's, it's settled down now. So good right. Yeah, thanks, Ash. Yeah, thank you. Our, our team halfway around the world doing tech support. Back in the studio. Yes, absolutely. I mean, she's in the studio, so. Absolutely. Uh, studio C. <laughs> yeah. So what else have we seen? Um, while Liam went to get the gear just now, I went upstairs to the Yamaha booth and talked to the Cubase guys. Which, you know, Reaper guy, Cubase guys, dun, dun, dun. Wow. But one thing that Cubase does exceptionally well now is Dolby Atmos. Okay. And that's something I want to be getting into very soon. So I think there may be some content coming up with me kind of doing my basic mix in Reaper and then porting it into Cubase to make it fly around and do crazy 3D stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because the surround panners in Reaper are cool, but... Dolby Atmos is a licensed thing. You need licensing and you need specific exporters mm -hmm. to do that their way. So just so everyone's aware, so like we were here yesterday 
but everyone was still setting up. So yeah. it was mostly just chatting to, to people that you knew in the industry yeah. and such and just kind of went over to, to Two Notes and said hi to them all and stuff. And yeah. then today, we we went over to Two Notes, but as you say, other than a little bit wandering around, there's still a lot of the show to actually yeah. see. Yeah, there's a lot we've not had time to see yet because it's still two full days of this. Mm -hmm. And so, this evening, where I'm going to be seeing Austrian Audio, AEA, Cloud, Microphones, I'm kind of being taken on a little tour of that whole thing. So, Music Creation has asked uh, AMS Neve 88M interface, any thoughts? Yeah, very cool. Not cheap, but then it's Neve, it was never going to be cheap. It's two genuine full Neve preamps in a USB interface. It's like £900 right. it takes, so it's like eleven, twelve hundred dollars mm -hmm. But if you want that Neve sound and you're a singer, or maybe you want up to two, two mics, you're not having to uh, buy the separate preamp, then send it into another interface. It's just, that is done, that is a thing. Okay. And so, yeah, if that's what you want, I think that's that's really cool. Kind of, it's the opposite end of the scale from something like Audience Evo 4, which is very affordable, very clean. Have you been, the, have you been, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Where, where the Neve is not affordable, but very coloured and very vintage. Have you been to see them yet? Uh, the Neve guys? Yeah. Yeah, I had a word with them yesterday. Like, the last time you met them in real life, though, was here was two here years in, ago. Yeah, yeah. No, Even though they're yeah. like 10 minutes down the road. Like, yeah. We've still, been been, we've still not been to the studio, the factory, have we? We've been working on doing a bit of a factory tour at Neve. Bringing our preamps down there, getting to look at those. Yeah, absolutely. But what's kind of happened is that at some point, uh, Glenn Fricker is supposed to be coming to the UK. But with everything that's happened over the last couple of years, um, it's been put back and put back because... Oh, you wanted to bring Glenn's way to Neve as well? Yeah. Yeah, that'd have been cool. The original plan was that was going to happen a while back. So... Yes, the plan was for us to go, then bring Glenn, and then that got changed. Everything conditions constantly changing because of the way the world is right now. But that is content that is going to happen. So this is really weirding me out still. So on this mic, we're using this bit and this bit, right? All of it. It's doing kind of clever maths. Ah, so it's like definitely much lighter, louder, louder on the side. It's because we're on wide like, stereo yeah, mode. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, thanks to the Harmon Group, by the way, AKG and JBL and everyone sorting out us out with this booth and with this microphone, so you can hear us. Can we? Oh no, the camera's there, isn't it? Yeah. Can I see if I can just show them? Show them? Yeah, pick, pick it up. Why not? Because yeah, we brought a tiny little camera. The original uh, plan was to bring a big, scary black magic camera. Yeah, so you can see the booth now. This this is the whole media area. Uh, there's Jordan Rudess from Dream Theater sat over there, chilling out. Uh, so yeah, you know, this is where like last last year, Lee Sklar was on the media booth while we were doing the podcast. Uh, Amir says any successes to the Yamaha HS8 studio monitors? Yeah, Cali Audio or Eve Audio or somebody else. Um, I didn't get to see anything from Yamaha in the monitor section. I literally had 15 minutes to talk to the Cubase guys, and now I'm here. So if there is anything else on the Yamaha booth, I will let you know in due course. There you go. You got to see a little bit of what we're seeing. Behind the scenes. Yeah. I have an idea says I'm still eyeballing the Evo 16. Yeah. For, for the money, the Evo 16 is absolutely unbeatable, I think. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. Yeah, I mean, are there better interfaces in terms of quality? Yes. How much more are you paying for those? Mm -hmm. Yes, is the answer. And, and again, that company have got a lot more coming in the future. Yes, they have lots of tricks up their sleeve. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's fun being on the inside of knowing, yeah. isn't it? It's so good. I like, because quite often, like, we're doing the podcast, and Adam's like, ah, I can't talk about this. And I have to wait until after the podcast and go, what was it then? <laughs> Tell me. But now, right now, we're finding out together all these really cool new things. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so much that, because, I mean, it's, it's no secret that companies work on things for years before they're released. Uh, and they don't want to talk about them publicly until it's close to the time, just in case it takes longer to produce or things change a little bit. Like, even the, the Revol pedals from Two Notes, the ones they, the prototypes they have on their stand, um, you have to press two buttons together to get the boost to engage. Mm -hmm. They've changed that completely for the production run. Right. So now, it's three channels, and if you turn on a channel and you hit it again, you get a boost. Mm -hmm. So, because that's more intuitive that you can look in, on a stage in the dark, look for the shining light on the pedal, yeah. and just hit that, yeah. and you get more. Yeah. So, yeah, 
things like right up till now, things aren't even finished. Because what a company's got to do is prototype something, test it with a few people like us, make sure it doesn't break and that it works, and sounds good, then commit to making 20, 30,000 of them plus. And then you've got to put your order in with the factory, and then you've got to wait. Mm-hmm. Are they in your hair? I've not seen them. No. I, I wouldn't have thought Music Tribe would do an event like this. Well, they might be here. I didn't, I didn't see who. Just but... thinking, like, like Behringer Corner. Like, you yeah. might need to, like, do... It, it, we'll have to find... There's got to be some Behringer interface here somewhere in some form. Yeah. I mean, Oberheim's here, so... <laughs> Ooh. Well, actually, that's that's kind of a sad news article that we had to talk about. Mm. Uh, talking about Oberheim. Not Oberheim, but Tom Oberheim's good friend, Dave Smith unfortunately passed away this week which we found about yesterday was an absolute shock it over dinner yeah yeah it's dave smith from uh, sequential circuits uh, creator of the prophet and i didn't know but basically most of the sounds that you heard in the 90s on sound blasters were all done from dave smith's uh, work and so yeah un- unfortunately um, yeah he he's no longer with us and we'll suddenly be, out the blue yeah completely out the blue he'll be fondly remembered so. and he was meant to be here wasn't he yeah I think so. So yeah, um, here's to to Dave Smith. Yeah, very sad news. But yeah, if we can find any Behringer uh, stuff, we'll uh, put something on an Instagram or community post or something. Yeah, uh, and go put it in a corner somewhere and leave it. <laughs> yeah, Behringer corner. <laughs> yeah, I've just seen a guy walk past with the sound toys bag, so I'm gonna have to find the sound toys booth and annoy, annoy those, those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, saw the Oak Sound guys as well, who I've just done a video with Smith uh, and Sue, then I talked to them and they love doing what we're doing. So they've got a new version of Sue that's going to be live sound that works on like the Avid mixing desks. All right. So you'll be able to tame everything and all the nastiness live in real time mm-hmm. uh, in a very clever way, which is, that's, that's big news for them. Um, I saw that uh, Guillaume from Blue Cat Audio has booth. Which I was editing a video for for him on the plane on the way over, <laughs> which was tricky because I was in rather a cramped seat and somebody put their seat back in front of my face. So I'm trying with my laptop with the screen kind of down, trying to see it like, yeah. trying to edit like a crushed squirrel. Yeah, we were, we were a little bit packed in like sardines on that plane. Yep. Well, for 11 hours. Yeah, that was. Fun. But it, but it's like you do that, or you literally pay more than double for it. For, and I looked it up. It, it's seven inches more room is what you get for pretty much double. Seven inches counts for a lot. Hey. <laughs> and it makes it double the price. Hey. <laughs> Anyone else got any questions that we probably won't be able to answer because we've not seen much of the show yet? Yeah, feel free, please, to to uh, throw your questions in the chat. And and obviously, like we can. Go and try and find out. I think so. we had a similar thing last, not last year, but in 2020 when we came. Yeah. We were in a similar position that we hadn't seen a lot of stuff yet because yeah, it's true. Still got a lot well, I think do. it was the first day that we did it last time, so we well, really been, yeah. didn't know anything about yeah. the, the new products yet. Mm. But yeah, um, I had so many emails this morning from PR from for companies going, "This is new. That's new. This is new. That's new." Uh, what date is it? Oh, it's the third. Um, Austrian Audio have got a new dynamic mic that they literally announced further embargo until today. Oh, okay. Which is $99. So they're going to start encroaching on that market. So that that's cool. They've got the OC16 as well, which is their kind of um, lower priced version of their, their 414 competitor. Uh, because, of course, the team from Austrian Audio used to be at AKG. The first time we saw them at the first NAM, they had literally just made the company. They were brand new. And now they've very much hit their stride. And someone said, like, the hot item. And interestingly, like, kind of outside of the show with the people we've been chatting to, um, the, the Lewitt mic that you've got has actually been the most talked about thing, which isn't yeah. even new. But everyone's, oh, yeah, a T-shirt. Wearing my Lewitt T-shirt. They've not got a booth this year, but um, Valerie from Lewitt is here representing. The 1040? The 1040, yeah. yeah. And yep. they showed me a new thing that's kind of under wraps, which is a different microphone. It's their microphone company. Uh, but I can't say anything about what it is because they've not quite finished production yet. But that really excited me. Oh, the one that we saw the thing, yeah. Yeah, they were like, hey guys, we got a thing. But yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel bad for me to say, Lewitt have a microphone coming because of course they do. That's what they do. But what it is, I can't say yet. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's, um, I'm trying to see just down here because we're in the main hall, kind of at one side. The pro audio is always in a different building. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I haven't been over there yet. 
No, I, I had a look. The upstairs is not so busy, but the downstairs is just buzzing like usual. Um, yeah, um, Billy says, what are you looking forward to the most? Maybe the 3 p.m. keg party at the Two Nose booth? <laughs> um, I guess at this point now, I've already seen and said hello to a lot of the people that we already know, so I'm looking forward to meeting new people and getting just new experiences, new contacts. Meeting the guys who make Cubase earlier was really cool because as much as I am kind of the Reaper guy, um, I grew up and learned on Cubase. So it's kind of like going home for me in a way. And doing a lot of work with John Brown and the Riff Hard guys, they all use Cubase. So Would you ever go fully back to Cubase? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, but that's because I'm not only comfortable with Reaper and it does everything I need, but I'm kind of known for it now. So, I know, but like, think of the PR. The Reaper guy quits Reaper. I don't think they can pay me enough numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but you, they, you generally just love Reaper, though. That's I do. But the, there are still a few things that it doesn't do, mostly because of licensing and cost. Like, um, I've seen, uh, I was talking to someone this week uh, about... Uh, a AAF support, which is what a lot of the film editing programs, um, they'll send a file to a sound guy uh, with kind of audio clips already kind of lined up and queued up. Mm -hmm. Pro Tools takes that and just runs with it. Yeah. Uh, Reaper doesn't, but it's a proprietary format. Um, if they added support for that, that's one of the reasons that things like Pro Tools cost as much as they do. The licensing. Licensing. Dolby licensing is expensive. AAF, that kind of thing, licensing, expensive. Um, so by just by taking just a couple of components out, that's why they can charge sixty dollars and not six hundred. Can they not just do them as add-ons? Possibly, but then they've still got to, they've got to develop for it, support it. They don't have massive teams. Um, but I, I don't see why not. But then they would have to relicense the fees and all that kind of stuff. Maybe. That's some. There's, there's always option. It's such a modular program. Reaper, that's, 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 that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah there's, there's, there's good reason for that to be a possibility in the future. But right now, Reaper um, for life. Yeah. Those are a couple of things that aren't there. Like Dolby Atmos, like I was saying earlier. Um, I can mix in 7.1.4 in Reaper, in which is what the kind of the bed audio is for, uh, for Dolby Atmos. Mm -hmm. But this specific object-based thing in the export is a very expensive license. And from what I gather, I could actually get the Dolby Atmos renderer working with Reaper. It's like $300, $350 just for the renderer. Which is, what, five, six times what Reaper costs? Yeah. So it's very specific. Whereas now uh, Cubase has an integration with it that Reaper doesn't currently have. Right. So that, that just would take a lot of the trumps out mm -hmm. for me. For that very specific job. Yeah. So yeah. Um, online tour of the, of the show. I mean, you could, you could probably do like an Instagram live or something at some point. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to be filming little bits throughout the week. Um, I'm planning on doing less videos this, this year from now. But the ones we are going to do are going to be comprehensive. Yeah, we just brought a, a little camera this time. Yeah. Like, as we found from, from last time, and uh, it was Glenn's recommendation as well in terms of, like, do the filming when you get back. Yeah. Like, just come meet people, like, chat. It's been great. Like, some of the people we've been hanging out with have been yeah. amazing people. To hang out I mean, with. the other thing is, a lot of these guys are so busy on their own stands with thousands of people coming through. They can't really take an hour away to talk to us. Yeah. So what we can do is just network with people that we've not already met and go, we're these guys, you're those guys, this looks awesome, send me one. And then we can spend more time with it. I can sit at home and read the manual or something and yeah. push buttons until I find a phone. It's, that's what I do. I mean, ultimately, other than unless you're trying to just like, the, the brand awareness part of the show for like the normal attendees is obviously huge. But aside from that, it's, it's putting a, a face to a name to then have a conversation elsewhere, whether it be at an after party or back at home. Like, that's the main reason for these sorts of events in every industry. Yeah. Uh, Mage says, is it mainly hardware companies or are the plugin guys represented? Uh, there are, there's, there's like a whole software row in ACC North building. So yeah, there's quite a lot of software guys here. And because they're running software, a lot of them don't need bigger booths. So 
Yeah. Tune in to ask about the Ampex. Tom's Blug. Yeah, so I know the guys there. Richard from Blue Guitar is a friend of mine. So I'm planning to go and talk to them. Um, apparently the, the unit works, but not all the functionality is there yet. So they can show us the sounds, but some of the advanced stuff isn't quite set in stone yet. That's something that Glenn was getting quite irate about, that they talked about this new Ampex thing two years ago, the last now. Sean says the, the audio's a bit poor. We do we what we can. We have what we have. We have a laptop and we have the equipment that are here. And also, if you were here, you would understand. Yeah. The, every boo that Nam is noisy. I, I, I'm wearing the headphones so I can hear Adam. Like, yeah. That's the reason why I've got them on. So, yeah, we, we are absolutely doing what we get. Um... Yeah, uh, Dolby Atmos, is it the future because the downward compatibility is better or another thing like 5.1, quad, etc. I mean, I think that the object-based audio is the future because Atmos isn't just about the number of speakers. Um, it's whole 3D concept that works on any number of speakers, including headphones or just stereo, and you get kind of a 3D effect on that. The more speakers you have, the better the effect is. But you only need to do one file, like you say, and it work. It should play back on anything. Are you here, Poo Ninja? The cell service in here, in there, is horrible. No basement this year. Yeah, we're we're using the media center's Wi-Fi to do this, um, which is why we're managing to get a broadcast out of any type. Uh, but yeah, you're right that the cell service in here is not amazing because there's a hundred thousand people all trying to use their phones. Yeah, might have been all right. Not been too bad. But yeah, if, if you're here, you should come say hi. Find out who you really are. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> the um, reveal of the Poo Ninja. Any announcement from UA? Don't know. <laughs> um, apart from the pedals, I don't think they've announced anything else. Uh, those are a pretty big deal for UA. Because uh, they've, they've got the Spark thing as well, which they announced a couple of months back. So they've got a lot to work with there already. Um, so yeah, beyond that, I don't think there is anything else. Uh, Neve had a lot of stuff that they're working on, like Dante to Maddie conversion and going lead that the new the Neve Genesis desk is now integrated with Dolby Atmos, which was a big deal. I may or may not be there. Plausible deniability. Oh come on, Poo Ninja! I've never met a real life Poo Ninja. Yes, absolutely. If, if, if I knew what Poo Ninja looked like in real life, which I don't... Then... If you're here, come to the media centre now and come on the podcast, I dare you. Yeah. <laughs> come to the front over there and start waving at us. You'll see yeah. us. Uh, Ash said the audio is superb, given the sound. So given given the circumstances, yeah. We are literally three feet away, like that far away, from a demo booth with a full band. Yeah, there's a full PA like within like 10 metres of us behind yeah. there. Yeah. No. So, yeah, yeah, we're doing what we can. Uh, hey, yeah. Adam, here, there, help all this David out. Ross, David, hello, a member of the Council hello. of Davids. Welcome. David, David, David. Yes, glad to see you're all here. But yeah, I've seen a few big names. I ran into Pete Vaughan earlier um, at the Two Notes booth, so he's doing well. Of course, we've been with Glenn Frick for the last two days. Mm -hmm. um, he's such a dude. Yeah, he's so nice. He's, he, is, he is very nice. I think, like... Someone was saying that, oh, he's not like how he is on camera. Yeah. But I think like, his, his online persona, it's like, it's like a caricature. It's amplified. Yeah, because yeah. he is like that. His sense of humor is very British. Yeah. Like, he's like... Very silly. And, yeah. yeah. And everything's sarcastic. He'll take the piss. But, like, just such an, a nice, like, patient person. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. But that, yeah, that's it. doesn't suffer fools. Glenn, is, <laughs> Glenn on camera is Glenn on 11. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Or if you're... A, not a cool person. Yeah. I say, doesn't suffer fools. You definitely get that. Maybe I can see you, but I'll never take the mask off. Mwah. The booing of the ninja. <laughs> yeah, um, Liam was saying that I wonder how many people are going to come up to me and be like, hey, I, I love your show. And I've already had one. So, and it's the, the first half of the first day. So that's halfway to my record. <laughs> Whereas but I walked the show floor with Glenn last night. Um, it, a lot of places, there's still the, the forklift trucks were still running around. Um, because media do get to come in early, but the place was kind of a wreck. And everybody we went past went to Glenn and was like, hey, either good to see you again or a lucky show. Wouldn't it be nice to get to that point? <laughs> I can't see anyone wearing a poo mask, so I think, I, I think he's not here. 
uh, just past this booth. Oh, hey, Gargut's Entertainment. Yeah, hello. Hello. And yeah, um, how many tech gasms have you both had so far? I mean, you definitely had one with the um, the two notes pedal. Yeah, the yeah. I was play. I was. It's the only thing I've actually got to play so far this this year. And I got into it very quickly. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, the headphones could have been a bit louder, but that's just this. And yeah, it was so good. Mage says I've got a rock star celebrity hairstyle. Why do you think I do this? <laughs> yeah, I can tie this up, take my glasses off, and nobody will recognize me. He just wants to be a mini Glenn. It was his inspiration, and now he's just growing towards it. It is funny being with them. Like, the man who made house on my hair is quite long now, I suppose, as well. But yeah. The man of big, wavy hair around us. It's like a... I don't know, what's the, shampoo, the famous shampoo of some sort? L'Oreal. Yeah, advert. Yeah, yeah. It definitely is. Because I'm worth it, that kind of thing. Hey. Yeah. But yeah, we're about to get kicked off the stand because we only have little time slots here. So we're going to have to disappear and go and film the rest of the event to show you all of the next coming weeks. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to say thank you everybody for tuning in. It's been uh, it's been emotional. And yes, um, Poo Ninja says I would have called it the Le Triumph. I think you and Kenner have already got the Triumph name. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've dropped the Le because I think people didn't get it. Yeah. And you also seen the, the the form factor as well being different. That's right. It's much wider the revolt pedal, but not deep, which means it'll fit because it, it's as deep as a boss pedal. So it'll fit in line with your standard pedals. Yeah. Which I, I think is much more useful um, as a form factor, blending in with other pedals. Mm-hmm. Which for a lot of people counts for more than you would think. Yeah. I know, but it's got to fit within the rig. Like if you've got things lined up and all kind of put in serial together and then you've got this one big pedal that takes up two rows. Like, yeah, huge it. pain. But yeah, we're going to go and look for more stuff and tell you all about the more stuff when we get back. So, <laughs> thank you everybody for tuning in. Hope you don't lose my voice. Who Ninja, I will find you. <laughs> and right, as we go, I'm going to run the Patreon thing. Thank you everybody, because that has genuinely helped us to get here. Mm-hmm. Um, the names on it are slightly out of date because it was the only file I could find on this laptop, so sorry about that. But if you are a patron on Patreon, then thank you so much. And if you want to help us get home, then, uh, then yeah, think about maybe joining, because that's how we'll get home. Yeah. We'll get stuck otherwise, but it will go towards funding gain home. Absolutely. Fun. So thank you, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video. Nom, 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 Hey, everyone. That might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop 